In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. There's a famous quote that I remember hearing as a young child growing up in Southern California in the 1960s and the 1970s. It's a phrase that the hippie movement of the time was using. And there were a lot of hippies in Santa Barbara, California in the 60s and 70s. They would use this phrase in regard to nutrition and how food is related to our effort as human beings in helping to lead a healthy and a happy and a peaceful way of life. They used to say, and this won't be unfamiliar to you, you are what you eat. And I also remember hearing a friend of my father's once say about nutrition and about obesity in general, that we all do have a choice in life regarding what we decide to consume. And he said consuming the, uh, concerning the consequences of consuming certain types of food that contain fat, he said, if you don't want it on you, then don't put it in you. However, from a psychological perspective, we know that there is much more that goes into who we are as people here in this life than just what goes into our mouths. The food we eat may help with our physical, overall, overall physical well-being, but we also are greatly defined as human beings by our actions and our behavior in life and by our relationships in life and by our chosen lifestyle in general. Or in other words, it may be true that we are what we eat, especially when it comes to Holy Communion and our consumption of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. But it's also true that we're defined by what we do in life and who we surround ourselves with in life and by how we relate to other people here in this life. And according to the gospel lesson this morning, there's also a spiritual element involved in defining what produces a happy and a healthy and a fulfilled way of life here in this world. In the gospel lesson this morning, we heard about a man named Nathaniel, who Jesus pointed out had the kind of character that we should not only try to emulate for ourselves, but also the character of the kind of people with which we ourselves should try to associate with. When Jesus saw Nathanael, he called him a man in whom there is no guile. Or in other words, a man who reflected a virtuous way of life. A man who was genuine. And a man whose heart was pure. And a man who was honest. And a man who had no deceit and no selfish agenda. And the gospel says that after seeing Jesus in person and speaking with him, Nathaniel immediately identified him as the Son of God. So obviously, Nathaniel was also a man of great discernment. Nathaniel led a life of virtue, having no guile, and he led a life of discernment, two human characteristics that should be a part of our focus and our attention during these next 40 days of the great and holy Lenten fast. Because the church intentionally and fortunately 
for us provides this time of Lent each year as a way to help us recondition ourselves and as a way to help us build up, build ourselves up here in this life as Christians living in this world. And on this first Sunday of Great and Holy Lent, the Church always reminds us of the Apostle Nathaniel and his example to us of the qualities that Jesus recognized in him and the specific qualities that we should be working on ourselves to develop within us as well. The absence of guile and the virtue of discernment. But on this first Sunday of Great and Holy Lent, the Church also asks us to direct our attention towards the holy icons that adorns the walls of our Church, and more specifically, to what those holy icons reveal to us about the kind of life we should be leading. Because within the complexity of our beautiful icons, far beyond what we're able to see with the naked eye, lies the true meaning of who we are as human beings living here in this world. As we said earlier, we're much more than simply what goes into our mouths and what we eat. We're also defined and we're influenced by who and by what we surround ourselves with here in this life. And on this day, which the Church calls Orthodoxy Sunday, or the triumph of Orthodoxy, we're reminded that those icons are not just beautiful paintings that adorn the walls of our Church, but that they are truly windows for us to peer into the very depths of heaven itself. They're called windows to heaven because they allow us to draw near into the spiritual world and into the very divine presence of God himself. Even while, we'll sh while we are still physically present here in this material or secular world, the icons reveal to us the glory of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. St. Paul says in the book of Ephesians that Christ's body, which is the church, is the fullness of all things, which means God's intention is for us to understand and to believe that he is everywhere present with us at all times. St. Paul says that he is all in all in that book of Ephesians. And at the beginning of every single divine liturgy, the priest reminds us all to focus on the meaning of that truth, that Christ is all in all. When he raises his hands in front of the holy altar, the priest says, O heavenly king, O comforter, the spirit of truth present in all places, and filling all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from our stain, and save our souls, O gracious Lord. But St. Paul also says that we are all co-workers with God, called out to work with him in carrying out his ministry of love here in this world and revealing his presence to the world around us. This is what's revealed to us in our holy and blessed icons and the importance of why we surround ourselves with them, not only here in church, but we should surround ourselves with icons in our home and in our car and in the place of our business and maybe even where we vacation from time to time, and in every place that we might find ourselves 
at any given moment in our lives. Because of what the icons teach us, and because of where the icons lead us. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the 40 days of the great of great and holy lent for us Christians is an opportunity pr provided to us by the church for us to get our lives back on track and to remember who we are and who we wish to become is influenced by those individuals with whom we surround ourselves with. And so we should always be working towards surrounding ourselves with people who remind us that God is in everything and that God is in everyone. And to surround ourselves with people who inspire us and who remind us that we are all called to reveal the glory of God's heavenly kingdom to others here on earth through everything that we do and to everyone that we meet. Because just like the people and events depicted in the holy icons that adorn the walls of our beautiful church, and just like the apostle of Nathaniel himself, we are all called to be living icons here in this world. And we can do that by choosing to lead a righteous way of life for ourselves and by choosing to lead a spiritual way of life and choosing to lead a life of holiness for ourselves, leading a virtuous way of life here in this world, a life like Nathaniel, in which there is, we become known as people who have no guile within us. Because like my father's friend said about nutrition, we do all have a choice about how we live. So let us choose well and let us choose wisely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.